Hi, I'm Liza, and I'm here to speak out on title. This is Mickey Blanco, and I am here to speak out on title. Inside, club, Mickey Blanco, let's go. Me and Liza, we go, <laughs> we go way back. Um, we started working together in Europe. I met Liza on like the festival circuit, um, you know, just playing shows, touring a bunch. And I just remember seeing them live and, and you know, hearing their, their, their DJ set. And, and then it was a few times, I think I saw you a few times before we actually began working together, you know, uh, at different festivals. And I was like, who is, like, who is this like, young like black woman kind of like commanding and like you know killing these stages in front of like you know thousands of people with a, a good musician in general there's just a certain almost like alchemy that they understand you know uh how to move people with sound and i i 100 percent saw that in you really early on and to be a really a, a good you know at least D dj you have to be really knowledgeable of a lot of music um, yeah, I just, I, I kind of like saw these traits um, with within her and I was like, I want to work with this person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, no, I was how, so gassed. I was like, so like, like, <laughs> you asked me, I was like, wait, me? Because yeah, obviously you've been listening to your music for quite a while. And I had so much fun touring with you as well. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was just really cute and like, even like when you go to like countries that are obviously like very like you haven't been before and you're just kind of just like you know two black people like at the festival you know with each other it's just like yeah. really, really good to like you know like have someone That's there nice. that can just like giggle with you about stuff literally um, so how has it been kind of like for you that process from like first performing with a dj to now performing with the band I think that I didn't realize because I just did my first concert like live concert it was still like California hasn't opened yet so uh it was it was still you know really socially distant I've fallen into the process quite, I think quite naturally, like, you know, during one of our first rehearsals, you know, by like the third run through of all the music, I was like, you know, we were in the small, you know, the small rehearsal space and I was on the mic being just like, Los Angeles, yeah. <laughs> I'm doing tonight. <laughs> like, yeah. um, you know, just getting back into all those cues, but, it used to be for the majority of, of my career, just me and a DJ. And, and that was a really great, I would say it was a really great, you know, training. Like it was a, it was a great tutelage because, um, I, you know, I always had to be, I had to be everything. Like I, like I had to be the backup dancers and I had to be this and I had to be that. And, and, you know, and in doing that, obviously, you know, and breaking that fourth wall with my audience, it made me a very like ferocious performer you know it made me fearless as a performer but now with the band it's like there were seven other people on stage with me you know three vocalists a guitar player a drummer someone on keys so i just did it the energy getting the, getting the energy from other performers i can't wait because because there are there are going to be moments in the, the new life set when i still am with the dj you know so i can't i honestly can't wait to when like when we, we can like like build that you know build that aspect of it and be on stage together again yeah so what is one of the things like when you see yourself like perform because when I think of my music and performing my music like I have this like very like clear image of like what I want that to look like in like five years you know <laughs> like that's still there's still a lot that you see yourself adding to it or is this basically like the base of what you feel like okay this is something that I could be doing in five years as well 
I honestly, like, <clears throat> I think, I think the big turning point in my creative process and knowing that I wanted to work with live instruments and to build my music, knowing that, you know, I didn't want to sample anymore, knowing that, like, I feel like this, this way of, of, of working, like how my creative, creative process has shifted, it feels so freeing because I feel like now I, I have discovered like longevity for myself. Um, whereas before, you know, making, I mean, so it's like, yeah, I've always been a rapper, but kind of my thing was like rapping, but like not making necessarily rap music. And, um, and I think that, yeah, like, I think that what's been the wildest thing is just this feeling of like security now. Like I, I really feel secure in the fact that like now I know after having kind of like this creative epiphany and, and just working differently now on everything, like I know now that I could be performing and making music till I'm like 70, 80 years old, you know, because it's like, it's, it's, it's wholly my music. It's not, it's not music that's, it's not music that's like trying to follow a zeitgeist or trying to, you know, hop on a trend or, or even music that's very youth oriented because, you know, a lot of, a lot of people who really make hip hop, hip hop is very youth oriented. Mm -hmm. And, you know, nothing is kind of more embarrassing than seeing just like an old rapper <laughs> on stage trying to keep up. But I mean, it's different if people are doing their hits or something like that, you know, but like, yeah. you know, seeing an old rapper try to keep up with like 21 year olds and their songs are about like, you know, drugs and partying and all that kind of thing. It's like, you know, like I, I did that. I lived that. There's, there's no way that I could like make a song right now about like Molly. <laughs> yeah. no, but I, I, fully, I fully get it though. Like what you're trying to say. Cause I feel like, cause that's to me has always been like some crazy, like mind boggling thing. Cause obviously like I produce all of my own stuff and like, I, it really hit me at some point where I was like, wait, like there's people that like get sent music and like, you know, make like, and make a song with that music, which is completely like, you know, I don't see one as being above the other at all, but it's just more like, I would, I was always thinking to myself, like, how do people then like fully relate to that experience of like that being their music when like, you know, you weren't in the process of like making it necessarily, you know? So I, definitely understand like what you mean with like feeling like it's something that can age with you because like yeah you like actually made it you know like it's, it's well, been a product <laughs> of your surrounding and like what you were working on at the time I was gonna ask you like honestly to talk about because you've just recently I mean I guess had like a really big shift in um in in your creative process and what you're doing yeah um yeah because obviously I I used to DJ a lot and then actually like a month prior to the pandemic I kind of decided I wanted to step away from that because I've been producing like before I even started DJing but I was I guess just not feeling comfortable enough like performing that music on stage so with <laughs> it was like a way for me to kind of convey a feeling or a message but like kind of still have that protection of the DJ booth and like still being able to play other people's music, you know? So if someone's like, oh, I don't like that song. It's like, well, it wasn't my track. So like, it doesn't matter kind of vibe, you know? <laughs> and now like fully producing and fully just like making music and that just being the only thing that I focus on has really opened up my perception of music as well. Because at first my idea was like, okay, I need to make music that can be played in a club, you know? And now it's like, wait, I can like make some stuff that doesn't even have drums in it. Um, and that's honestly really exciting. And I'm really excited to see where this will take me. I just see so much in you that you you have this understanding that like each release, each, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's so much more about, about your own life and being this mirror to your actual life rather than like, you know, goal, 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 you know, you like, you're, 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 you're living the process, you know, and yeah. that's, I think, I think it's, I think this, I think the sooner that like younger artists get that, <laughs> like the less, you know, the less, you know, man, obviously we still all have our like manic spirals, but I think <laughs> that the sooner that younger artists get that, the less 
you know, manic your, 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 your life can be. And you can just really enjoy, you know, making art for art's sake. Actually, I was recently reading a book. Um, it's written by Madison Moore, like this Black guy. He wrote a book about fabulousness. And he basically goes into how when people talk about like fabulous people, they think of like, you know, um, like Marilyn Monroe or like Marlene Dietrich, you know, like fabulous, like women or whatever. And um, he was actually saying that fabulousness is like something that happens when you realize that you don't really fit in anywhere. So you just kind of have to create something and make it cut. <laughs> you know <laughs> and I think obviously like both of us being just like queer and also both of us being black I think it's not necessarily something that we chose to do I think it's just like a position that you like arrive in you know like okay here I am making music oh wait like everyone in the room like doesn't look like me you know and also um already knowing that there's historically been a bias to people who look like you you know and like, how do you navigate that? And like, there's no way to navigate that. So like, what do you do? Like, you just. It's like, I guess I didn't realize, you know, coming from this more underground background that so many things that I was doing, so many people at that time, this is not that long ago. You know, we're talking like 2012, 2013, like when I started, so many things about me, people saw as taboo, like wildly taboo. And it's been, quite amazing watching this you know acceleration point happen within our culture where in the time that I have had a career you know Obama in the in, in America you know passed you know legalized gay marriage and and so many conversations around uh gender and sexuality and intersectionality have you know if they haven't been mainstreamed they're definitely now more in the wider vernacular, you know what I mean? Living the twists and turns that society has taken. Uh, it's been kind of wild because it's like, it's kind of like I have felt like society in so many ways has been, you know, playing this game of catch up with me and the things that, you know, I believe and internalized and, you know, put into my art and put into my music. Yeah, for sure. I think like what you said, about like you know kind of like becoming like finding yourself in like this un like in these underground spheres and then eventually like publicizing yourself to like a bigger commercial audience is definitely kind of weird because I also started noticing like you know like in the underground like this stuff that we do is like it's like not like special like at all you know like it's not I mean obviously we're all special but I just mean in a way like nobody like blinks twice if like they see <laughs> certain way you know like in the clubs or like you know at the underground whatever and then like once you actually start like pursuing a career and like commercializing like these aspects of yourself all of a sudden like you get put in this like very kind of like political um like jacket almost it's just a very like fun funny thing to think about you know like being yourself and being like how that kind of just gets like um, commercialized to a point where you're just like, I didn't even know that this was so extreme until I guess you said it was, you know? Do you see yourself as like being one of the people who kind of paved the way for like others? Because I feel like you are. <laughs> I mean, well, <laughs> I know, I, I guess it's that thing where it's like, you know, you, you always try to dance around this question in the most humble way, but like, I, like it's like, I, I know I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think it's good to say. Yeah. It's like, no, it's like, it's like, you know, no, I know, I definitely know I did. Um, and it's, you know, it's, but it's just one of those things where you don't, you don't have any control over these things, you know, and when you, and when you look back at it, you know, like I said, like, I was just like an, I, I was honestly, it was just like an artsy kid doing, you know, doing whatever I wanted and not, oh my God, I look, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm just much more mature now than I was at 25. And so like, 
when I look back at some of the decisions that I made career-wise, I'm like, God, like I really was just doing whatever the hell I want. You know, like this, this wasn't like a smart business decision or this wasn't, you know, a very careerist decision or, you know, like, I mean, one time I released a lead single for a project where I was just entirely rapping in Latin. And, yeah. and, what? and That's crazy. yeah, it's called it's called the initiation. In the video I have like two heads and it's it's actually really cool. Body ain't no stop. Gotta pay. Gotta pay no stop. Gotta pay venom. Gotta pay damn. Damn confidence. But you know, it's like my the concept at the time was that I wanted to make like real goth hip hop. I wanted to make like goth hip hop. And I thought, you know, what better way, you know. It sound, sound almost like I wanted to make music that like you know like it's almost like if Dracula started rapping you know and like when I when I think about I did this project called Gay Dog Food where you know I wanted to make like feminist grunge hip-hop when I think back to like these moments where I was literally just doing what was coming out of my brain um I I I am really happy for that trajectory because um, very few, very few artists who kind of pioneer anything kind of get to experience the fruits of their labor. And I think what's really awesome about, you know, this moment right now is that, like, I'm going to, <laughs> you know, my career was really built off of uh, kind of the, the, the breaking down, kind of the deconstruction of of the music industry. People all over the world were hearing the songs that I was creating because of, of what I kind of call this like digital diaspora of just like queer kids and hipsters and just, you know, and people just like, you know, who who like new stuff. And, and it was through, you know, Twitter and Tumblr and Instagram and Facebook um, that that my music was, was kind of like going, you know, all, all over the world. And, uh, this moment, I think, is is really important because, you know, bef before before that moment in time, you know, you had to kind of be like a major label artist for people all over the world to know who you are. Um, but through these like online communities, you know, people were able to raise their hand in Mexico City and say, we want a Mickey Blanco show. We want Mickey Blanco here in Sao Paulo, Brazil, in Paris and London, you know, and especially because being a queer artist in hip hop in, in that time, it's like, I knew already that I was up against so much hate and so much rhetoric in the United States. You forget the struggle of transgender people. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that we can open our hearts and our minds and understand what non-binary means, okay? It, 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 it goes beyond pronouns, so I'm gonna stop preaching. And this song, this song is for my people, who you are. Let's go. And so, yeah, through this like digital diaspora that, and then through and through the constant touring, you know, making sure that I put myself out there and I played as many shows as possible in different cities, in different countries, in different territories. Um, that that's how like I kind of built this organic following and it, it's funny because it's actually like working that way of like touring constantly and that's actually a very old school rock and roll way to build a career yeah. um, that that it's actually a quite an old school way but it was like that in combination with the with 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 yeah, this, these, you know, these online social media means of communication and, and, and having that be uh, a thing for the first time, that, that definitely is, is what helped me connect to, to so many people. But I don't know, uh, what, about, what about you? Yeah, no, I think I full and wholeheartedly agree with that. Like the first few times that I like started touring, like I completely like was able to create my first like Europe tour because I was just friends with people on SoundCloud who like all did raves, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and like that's literally how I was able to like play like my first few shows. And I remember eventually when I finally was getting offers from agents, it like based it also could it also meant that I could ask for more because I was already like, I ha I know I have fans here. I know I have fans here and I've already like done these things. And that's all like community, you know, it's like all people like wanting to like help you towards those first steps, but also then 
liking to see your growth and also not seeing your career as like some type of like momentary kind of like this is what's in and hot right now but like wanting to see that growth over the years and it's actually so crazy because I don't know if you have this still but I have this thing right now where there's like a certain like couple of fans that like reply to all of my stuff and like, <laughs> I, know, I like know their usernames and like I know like I like follow a few of my fans on Twitter too and like I know their usernames and I'm like like it's just so funny because it's like it's almost like your friends in a way I mean we're not really friends but it's like me also realizing that I'm like at a kind of pivotal well, like you know at this moment in my career where like things are gonna hopefully start kind of like expanding like very soon and like kind of like realizing that I have like these people that I feel like know me and I know them and you know because you don't really have control over that once you start going more public or once you start like signing bigger deals or like you know it's like what you said earlier it's like when when people like think that's the first time like that's you like what you're presenting. <laughs> like, you know what you're yeah. presenting in 2021 like that's you yeah. and like people there's people that actually know who you were in 2012 and I think that's so important because it gives longevity you know it gives longevity to a career because imagine if I wanted to like make like have my first album be like scream out music you know then like there would be at least a few people who would like understand that that and then maybe me releasing a pop album the next year you know you have a history you come from somewhere yeah you know? exactly and I think that I think that really matters now I mean even then you know nine and a half years ago you know there are a lot of people you know that were you know making music and but now it's like I mean it's 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 really become quite uh, democratic. <laughs> I just you know it's like it's like it's it's like, it's like everybody's making a song now. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's like you're it's like you know your your veterinarian is like a SoundCloud rapper. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and it's so true. It's so true. And especially there's like a lot of people who like know each other and like they're both in like very high positions and like you talk about it and they like met on MySpace. You know, like yeah it's super I think just building that foundation and I think that foundation is honestly like apart from you and your craft it's like community you know it's like that that's really like what you build most of your stuff on and it's like I think it's very important also for as an artist to like really recognize that because like yeah like it's 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 such a scary thing sometimes to see like those major aid like major label artists like kind of pop on the scene and like have one hit and like all these people are like oh my god I love this person and then like you just you like never hear from them again you know because it's like they never yeah. had like that community or like fan base to like support them into like new ventures you know it wasn't I mean it just it wasn't organically it wasn't it wasn't a it wasn't an authentic thing <laughs> <laughs>